events that is occurring okay so with the help of the capel program we are able to automate those features and uh, we are uh, configuring the panels as well so with the help of the canoe panel configuration means that is a simulation one so we are simulating the model and the back end it will be the capel program front end if you are designing something else like that back end it will be the part of the capel program so where it have the timers on the io panel graphical designer serial port and uh, start on keyboard so all other message signals that can be accessed with the help of the capel programming and uh, mainly we i we are uh, went with the canoe tool so it is a simulation like panel we usually create and testing we are usually do and the next part will be the diagnostics so it is a part of the uds okay so that will be going into the next class and the can analyzer it is a similar to the canoe but only it will be the single node communication we cannot simulate we cannot perform the simulation in the can analyzer okay so there are the protocols ethernet most flex ray and lin okay and the can other protocols that can be used to access the uh, setup and uh, next coming to the yes so uh, these are the some features where like for sending of the messages where, where we can set manually so instead of that we are writing the uh, messages so uh, we are setting the messages with the help of the capel and we send the messages cyclically or periodically that uh, depends upon the messages that we need to trigger okay in the canoe panel we simulate it uh, with the cyclic way okay and uh, next will be part of the if else conditions we usually do and uh, the wait conditions or start or stop relay and some of the graphic uh, debugging so the names and all that can be configured in the capel okay so next is about and the part of a uh, start of measurement so on start is uh, specifically whenever the canary were starting so that way uh, we can use the on start and the measure uh, receive once the message is receives so we can use the on message and signal change if any signal change just occurred in the canvas so that can be monitored with the on signal and time events so this specifically for the time events where uh, uh, the events got triggered and the key press so on key or used uh, whenever the key uh, if you enter as a user in termin so that message or the capel scripting whatever we updated that messages or signals will be transferred and uh, there are some part of for uh, capel events the system and uh, can message or timer or keyboard also those are the events we have and uh, on key so yesterday i told you like on key how we need to define so if you are pressing a so then the key uh, then the whatever we are defined within the key uh, on key the program will be sent and uh, next on key f1 so whenever you will press f1 uh the message will be transferred and uh, these are the data types so integer uh, signed or unsigned or floating point uh, of the integers so in the capel we have this many data types with respect to that uh, we have the bits information and uh, the variable declaration so so this is a simple uh, capel so just i am printing the data Uh, so how the printf we are using is the write okay so here i am analyzing the value initializing the values and uh, here i am printing with the write okay so that output i can monitor in the write window as i shown you yesterday so we are uh, here in the home we have the write window so here we are able to monitor it okay this is the write window and uh, the program window we usually write this uh, here okay and uh, next part will be the so capel browser has you know about the capel browser and uh, the compilation f9 is the shortcut we used to 
do the compilation of single file and shift F9, it will compile all the files. And uh, next event handlers. So that I, as I discussed above that, uh, we have the on key, on message, on signals. This all comes on start, on stop, on all the event handlers. And when we are writing the program, so these are the four mandatory fields we required. So it have the include, uh, the include section will be uh, about the generic code, what we are able to access the other program files. So that will be added in include and variables is specifically uh, the global variables. The one, the messages are the signals which we need to access the throughout the program. So that will be defined within the variable. And uh, next will be the on key. So whatever the event handlers, so that we need to execute, that will be a part of the on key. And uh, whatever the operations that you need to do, so that will you can update the code here. It will be a part of the called function. And that is a single program. And uh, there are operators as well. So like uh, the and operator, subtractor, and the logical not and and bitwise and bitwise or as you know in the cap uh, C programming, these are the operators. So same operators we can use in the capital as well. Okay, so that's it uh, about all the capital scripting. Okay, so now we are going entering into the session of the UDS. Okay, so what is UDS? So what is the agenda that we are, so in the in introduction we'll go and uh, how the external tool and uh, our ECV is configured and how we are doing the diagnostics. So how we are sending the UDS uh, information to the ECU and uh, how we can verify whether the request we sent it's valid or not okay and uh, before going this what is a uds so uds is generally used for diagnosing of the information means uh, like suppose you went to the hospital okay you got a headache and you went to the hospital and you will get a treatment of uh, like saying that you've got a headache and uh, he will give you the respect to tablet and uh, particular injection to you. Similar way, he, I, he you told it and he identified and he given the medicine to you, the proper. If you are not able to express your health problems to the doctor, it's very difficult to give you the proper medicine. So similar way, whenever the cars have the problem, it should express so where the problem and what is the problem that is a very difficult state that, that are the electronic items it cannot express no so there is a one situation like with the help of this uds diagnostics tools we are able to access the failure information part and means with the help of that tool it can express us whenever we will give the what is the problem if you ask from the tool so it will give the what are the problems present in the issue so that will be shared to the shared to us so then we are going to fix it so we are not giving the medicine so we need to fix the whether it is the wires are shorted or any file or sucker so that can be identified and we are going to fix the problem okay so that that is the how like we usually do from the UDS tool, okay? So, so where we are able to access from the system. Okay, so whenever a repair, repair is occurred or, and we need to validate the information, so that can be monitored. Okay, so generally that UDS, it came from the, it is a standard of 14429. And it is a combination of the KB, uh, KW2000 and the CAN Diagnostics uh, 157653. So uh, like uh, with this 
both combinations we got the iso standard 14229 uh, and uh, moreover this standard is uh, set whatever the network con configured in the cars no ecus so the data can be accessed at one time okay and uh, moreover uh, whatever the requirements that we are implementing the car uh, like stores the software feature or hardware features so that we are establishing uh, in a secure way and where we able to access whenever we require it v means it is a oems what is oems means the one who are going to manufacture the car uh, and uh, specifically the car owners have some permissions where they can replace the softwares in the issues and the guys who are working in the garages okay the sheds they cannot take the software in the issue and they cannot modify the software in the issue they have some restrictions it it is a part of a security features they should not access if they try to access it it cannot give the information properly to the user who can trying to take the info so that's how the security features are implemented uh, when they're uh, doing the software development this uh, uds is uh, unified unified means combined combined of the kw2000 and 15763 standard diagnostics means it it will diagnose uh, diagnosed what what is the problem and where is the problem and how you need to what is the fault occurs in the vehicle or what is the fault occurred in the ecu when the fault is occurred so such kind of diagnostic will do and the services services is specifically uh like uh, individual operations okay so i need to update the value what i need to do i need to read the value of the engine speed so how i need to do and i need to restart the system so what is the service so there are specific uh, services with the help of the ser ser services ids we are able to modify the our user information okay uh, so uh, we have uh, the external uh, tool okay so when we are communicating with the ecu so we use the external tool to connect uh, directly to the plug in to the car device and we are able to send the device uh, service okay so similar way in the canoe we are able to send the service uh, the request and uh, we we'll, we need to verify from the ecu whether it is a positive response or the um, negative response so request is what we are sending to the ecu response is the ecu is uh, sending the response to us and the request will be always uh, we send in the form of message and the response also it will be in the form of message but it it have two scenarios the positive scenario and negative scenario positive scenario is it accepted the ecu is accepted towards your request it will send the positive request if the ecu is not accepting your information you will get the negative response so these are the two phases that we have towards the request okay uh, this is the format so like uh, when we are uh, sending the request so we are sending like a request service id we have one byte of information and uh, there are some sub function parameters we have um, and service id and sub function for parameter and data parameter so this is how the request format will be uh, so whenever i told you know the services we for upload we have the different uh, service id and uh, downloading of the data we have the service id and reading of the data we have the service id so this is a one format like how we usually follow with the request of the service id sub function parameter and the data parameter so the sub function parameters it will be the one byte or two bytes or three bytes depends upon the service id 
and the data parameter as well. So whatever the data that we need to trigger. And now, as I told you, the positive response. So the positive response uh, response will be, you will get a response service ID and the message. So the data value, data value, we usually get whatever the service ID we are sending now. Like if I send 10, 10 is my service uh, request ID. So 10 plus 40, 40 will be the response service ID, okay? This 40, how we are getting is as per ISO standard, uh, this 40 will be added to the response service ID, okay? That will be the format. I will tell you in later classes. So how this 40 is coming into the picture, okay? And uh, the re uh, response service ID, and this will be the request sub function and the data parameter. It is similar to the as a part of the request. So request, you are able to see the same, right? So request service ID sub function and the data parameter. Here also we have the response uh, service ID and request sub functions and the data parameter. And uh, as I told you, know, like we have the two scenarios. One is a positive scenario and negative scenario. The negative scenario will be like, uh, you will get the negative response and uh, the request service ID and NRC code, and negative response code, NRC. We usually call NRC, means negative response code. So we are getting like this. Okay, so next will be these are the two formats, and uh, without sometimes some of the service side is you know, oh, the responses the, the responses usually will get the with sub functions. Some of the service IDs we won't have the sub, sub functions, so it will come only the request ID and the data, it will be the format of this, and, and we have the timers. The, these timings are very important. The P2 can timer uh, and the P2 star can, what it is. So uh, generally the timeout, it is a, about the timeout for the diagnostic tool to wait of a successful transmission of request message for start of relative incoming response means whenever you are going to send the data. Okay, so from no, I don't have the access. Okay, let it be. So, okay, so here uh, you are able to send the request. Okay, once you send the request to the ECU, the ECU need to respond it. If the ECU is not responded on time, okay, if ECU is not responded at, on time, what you usually get is, so you will get a negative response. Okay, so there is a time duration where it should uh, after sending the request the response should be responded within a time like one second or two seconds or uh, 500 milliseconds so that duration will be a part of the p2 can server so that is the minimum time duration where it will wait uh, and suppose it is a p2 can server it is a 500 milliseconds so the request is sent and it is waiting around 500 milliseconds. Okay, that is the maximum condition. And P2 star can server means the timeout, it, that it is crossing the timeout for 2000 2, milliseconds, means two seconds it is crossing. So until that, like 500 seconds to next 200 milliseconds, that duration will be there, no? That will be the P2 star uh, can tester means you will get a, uh, the hexa value of 78 uh, saying that uh, NRC code. This will be, we usually get like this. 7F request uh, service ID and NRC is a 78. It means uh, it will say that uh, you are waiting, uh, whatever the request is received, just you need to wait for some time. So that is the indication of 78. Okay, so uh, these are the timing parameters where you uh, where it will be a part of the P2 star can and P2 star maximum. Uh, means this is the, from the tester side, they are sending the request and this is the ECU side that it is request, uh, whatever the request is sent by the tester or the server, it will receive to the ECU. 
okay so so generally we have the p2 star uh, maximum minimum it will be like a 20 milliseconds uh, will be the maximum value of the p2 and p2 star will be the 200 millis uh, 2000 milliseconds means uh, until 20 milliseconds the ecu can wait okay after 20 milliseconds you will get an nrc of saying that 78 so whatever the request you send to the ecu it sent successfully but after 20 to 2000 milliseconds it wait for some time as uh, it will give the positive response okay so we have the uh, diagnostic services so the services are uh, the application layer services means it indicates the diagnostic services uh, and uh, the external equipments are there so there are some services where uh, it will fall from the operations okay and uh, there are some of the service service ids so you can write down this so uds unified diagnostic services Okay, service IDs you can write down this. So I will give you brief notes, letter classes, CVs, and other information. In the vaccine, you say school bus law, either pillow and drum, pop law. School bus kick in the bomb is Esther. Palabatha, the car, Mundar Ninchelli, while the naked person was disturbed. Arvind, you are uh, un can unmute. Is that true? Standana sends. Okay, so you can write down the notes. UDS, UDS is a diagnostic sections. Unified diagnostic services. Okay, it have the service ID of diagnostic section control. That is a service ID is 10. And ECU reset, 11. Okay, don't write the service ID until for everyone. So just write down ECU reset, 11 and clear diagnostic information that is 14 and read data by identifier 22 and write data by identifier 2e and test a present it will be 3 you can write down like that So these are the service IDs. We need to understand like how these service IDs are they are using into the uh, in the canoe, how the service information is sending to the ECU, uh, how they are uh, reading the information, what is the purpose uh, of using this service ID, what is the format. So format sequence we discussed previously. Uh, slides so now we need to under, uh, we need to make the frame uh, for each and every service ID how that format will be different and how the data we need to transfer okay let me know once you complete it Completed, you all? Sir, 
please repeat that uh, p2 and p2 star uh, that point that point yeah i will i will let you know in the coming classes that just i tell told you in the overview so from here uh, we'll start in detail about explaining those concepts okay sir thank you sir. so uh, generally uh, we have this uh, diagnostic section control okay so diagnostic section control is uh, whenever we are uh, doing power on power off of the ec you know the controller so it will be in a uh, default section okay the first phase and next we have the extended section and programming section there are different layers in the software okay uh, so to enter into those sections this sec uh, diagnostic section control is the one it will help us to switch one layer to the other layer okay so as i told you like we have the default section programming section and extended section so just these three points are important okay uh, so default section is this it it doesn't support any diagnostic applications okay so only some futures he able to access it and programming sections is it's related to the memory uh, of the values that they need to trigger or update of the programming parameters and extended is uh, where he able to access the individual issues and enable some of the ios okay for that purpose we use the extended section okay and uh, okay that we are going to we'll discuss in detail coming coming classes and these are the services there are many services i said to know like ecu reset is the 11 and diagnostic section control 10 security access 27 communication control 28 test at present 3 and uh, secure data transition 84 so there are many services okay with the help of the chart sir, or these numbers are uh, like serial service numbers IDs. Service, service IDs service IDs yes okay. so with the help of this service ID it's only uh, which one which service is the one we need to write and which is the one for security access you need to get the some permissions so for that you need to use this 27 you need to clear the sum of the details we need to read uh, we need to go with the 14 service and i need to upload or download the software i need to go go with the 34 and 35 so these are the some services so you cannot use 22 for re, uh, 22 for upload or download of the software so like that uh, whatever the service that is defined to respect to uh, operations so we need to use this Okay, this is the layer sessions, default section, programming section, extended section, standby session. Okay, so whatever the sessions that is uh, marked as the cross, no? So those are the supported. This is an example, okay? So the, this is an example like for the reference, uh, whenever you are getting the requirements or whenever you are making uh, you, to update, like what are the services you need to, cover as a part of writing of the test cases or uh, part of writing of the implementation of the uh, code or testing such things so this like this it will be defined always okay this is the very important uh, it, it is a template like you can assume so what are the services you need to support such things it will be cross marked and uh, as I told you, uh, the uh, 10 diagnostic section control, we have the 10. So the 10 is the service ID. Okay. And we have a sub function. So the format will be like a sub function. Sub function, we have a 01 is the default section. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, program section is uh, 02. Extended section is 03. Okay. And uh, standby is a 49 but these are not much required only uh, 01 02 03 is required for you all now 
understanding and moreover those are the services in many organizations they use okay and uh, so the response for 10 will be like a 50 it added 40 okay how this is adding the 40 we'll discuss in it okay so you know about byte right so there is a one byte one byte means how many bits eight bits eight bits eight bits okay so one 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 so which is the bit zero position first here your cursor points this is a bit zero and where is the bit seven yes last 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 okay good this is a bit seven and uh, bit six is this one okay usually we'll consider only the four bits okay so four bits is so just i will make it as a zero zero for our understanding of 10 and uh, next is uh, just i will make it this also zero and even i will make this also zero uh, okay so think yeah so now this is a bit zero bit one bit two bit three okay again it is a bit zero bit one bit two bit three okay like it is a four four bits like one two four eight like that okay similarly here uh, it will be a one byte completely now i need to give the number i think this is not good but i will go with the vote in the browser it is not getting clear okay just a moment i'm opening it so this is a byte one byte where it have the one one four bytes okay so how i can write one one this is a one like a one zero how i can write 10 is this is a 10 so means one zero one zero sir. yeah zero zero one zero zero one like we need to write like this okay. like how i written is uh, the same here we we need to follow one two four eight because the eight bit we need to follow this uh, when we are uh, writing 10 or some extra values you know always we need to consider this if it is a one byte we usually write with um, eight four two one eight four two one okay so if it is a like a zero x nine means it's not like uh, we are giving the complete value okay so suppose if it is a zero x uh, 15 okay so means so it will be the value we need to write like this 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 we need to write like this if it is a the hexa values okay so here also we us, we need to follow the same so 1 2 4 8 okay so if it is uh, i am sending the request as a 10 okay so after sending the request send so this is the bit 7 so if it is say this is a bit 7 the last one and uh, next is the bit this is a bit 0 okay as i told you uh, as per iso standard the bit sixth position will be high will be high for positive response okay 
means whenever we are getting the pass to response now this will be the bit sixth position so it will we are getting the one okay so means uh, it will be a one here so what is the value now now it is a 50 so uh, so means whenever you are adding the uh, pass to response the response will be 50 in case if it is a 20 similarly it will add the 20 plus 40 it will be 60 so like that uh, the bit sixth position will be high for a positive response so that's how that 40 came into the picture okay yes sir sir uh, if yeah. if the if there is a zero in the sixth position we consider it as a negative response huh? yes uh, so as per is for standards they mentioned that uh, uh, whenever we usually get the positive response ecv's request uh, accepted your request so the bit sixth position should be high means in that case it will be active so it will give the positive response if it is not running it will be zero means it, it means the ecv is not responded in that case you will get the negative response sir uh, i mean uh, that means sir if we are sending in that uh, in our send information there uh, there should be a one yes no no whatever uh, we need to send the data okay so okay, when sir. we are sending the data if it is a valid the ec will respond positive response if it is invalid it won't send so we can check only the response signal in that signal sixth position in is one that is a positive response yes um, okay sir thank you sir. okay so that's how like the request and format will be considered so here even in the case of 11 is a issue reset it have some operation like sub functions hard reset uh, key on off is 0 to soft reset 0 3 okay so the hard reset for this is different uh, sub functions will be different for issue reset and even the diagnostics section control here it have the different sub functions default section programming section extended section so it have different uh, sub functions and uh, the other services uh, id also have the different sub functions okay so even uh, here uh, the negative response we usually get as a 7f if it is not accepting so it will be followed with the format of the requested service id and the so far, there are some set of nrc codes so it means uh, whatever the incorrect message length it will be one three and if can, some of the conditions not met it we will get a 22 and request out of range so 31 so this will be the negative response format so whatever we are requesting if it is not accepted we will get a negative response in case of positive response it will will get 14 right one four plus 40 so you will get a 54 that will be the positive response for the service id and this is for 22 so 22 we usually go with the read data by identifier and the uh, data id so data did it have it two bytes generally so uh, when we are requesting 22 did the response will get a 62 and the data identifier and the record values means whatever the uh, data recorded value that present in the did so that will be written so this is about the reading of the information with respect to 22 okay and uh, the negative response we have the 7f and 22 and uh, there are some nrcs okay it means that 13 22 31 33 because these are the supported nrc codes uh, 13 is incorrect message length means uh, in if it is a invalid format whatever we are requested no from the uh read data identifier if it is a invalid you will get the 13 and if it is a condition not correct we'll get the 22 and request out of range 31 
and uh, some of the security access is required okay to enter into read the information so in that case we usually get the uh 33 if some of the access is not uh you were not able to proceed with uh, the security access in that case we'll get the 33 and uh, next we have the security uh access that is a 27 uh, this is required uh, to change the data or uh, to enable some of the features in the ECU. So we need uh, the security access for that. We have two uh, sub functions that is a request seed and uh, send key. It means seed and key mechanism will be followed here. So with the help of send and key, uh, we able to access into the ECU and we'll receive the data and uh, we enable the data we can upload the data so that features can be done from the 27 service id and this will be the request format like we have the 27 and the sub function and uh, some of the uh, sub functions will be towards the C request seed will be 01 03 05 will followed and say send key will be the 02 04 06 will be followed for the send key and request seed will be the pass to response. So, and uh, send key pass to response. Like we required pass to response we are, when we are entering into the security access. And this will be the uh, once the security access is uh, accessed. So, we got the pass to response for the both the future. So, that's how the security message request we are sending. And the pass to response will get like the 27 plus 40, 67, and the security access type and the seed. And uh, the native response, uh, so for the 27 will be like a 2F, uh, sorry, 7F and the 27 uh, means that is the service ID. And some of the NRC codes will be like a 12, sub function not supported, and incorrect message length and condition not correct, and uh, request sequence error. Uh, that is the 24 and invalid key is 35 and uh, 36 is the accident number of attempts so there are some services uh, we usually get for the negative response so and uh, write data identifier we need to write data to the specific id so in that case we use the 2e uh, so 2e will follow the write data this is the service id 2e and uh, the data identifier and the record data so whatever the data we need to write for the respective day id we usually write the data and we are right uh, sending in the request and uh, the response uh, so once it is written so we'll get the response as the service id and the did we won't get the data here and some of the nrc sort like uh, it is same like in valid format condition are correct and request out of range and the secret access day. So there are some supported analysis will be considered. And uh, like this, uh, the service ID is out there and uh, it has some features um, of a request and request of the message and uh, waiting of the positive response or negative response. Such scenarios will be followed uh, as a part of a UDS. Okay, so this is all the overview. And uh, some of the common uh, NRC codes are like 11 is uh, SID service ID not supported, 12 is sub function not supported, 13 is incorrect message length in valid format, 22 is condition not correct, 31 is request out of range, 33 is security access unit, and 78 is a requested correctly received uh, 